So, I just want all of you to think real quick about that one person in your life that's always just trying to do the right thing, that's providing that life advice, those quotes. Think of that person, and then multiply that person by like a thousand. And that's my neighbor, Mr. Luke. I remember one day talking to Mr. Luke, just talking, and, and I remember him telling me this. He said, Michael, to solve even the most impossible of situations, you have to commit to change and then alter everything else behind the scenes. And of course, I'm like, yeah, totally, but in my head, I'm thinking, I have no idea what this guy is talking about, so I'm going to nod my head and say yes. <laughs> and eventually, thankfully, we changed the conversation, and I headed home. But what he said to me that one day, that one quote, that one line stuck with me for a very, very long time. And as I thought about what he was saying, I eventually understood that what Mr. Luke meant that day was that no matter how difficult the problems you're faced with, no matter how difficult or complex or entangled these problems seem in the current state of our world, if you have a clear vision of the goal and a willingness to make striking changes, any problem can be solved. But I took that with a grain of salt. And as I was analyzing each of the successes that I've had throughout my life, what I found was what he said was true. But even more significantly, that anyone can solve the big problems in the world, if only they knew how. And so from Mr. Luke's quote, I found my own message, that everyone should try and solve the big problems in this world. But why? Why? Why should I, why should you guys, why should we, why should normal people like us go out there and try and solve the big problems in this world? Because we're just normal people, right? But the truth of the matter is that you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be at the forefront of politics, where at the cutting edge of science to make a difference in this world. And it's so much more doable than you think. Because just look at me. I mean, I'm no genius. In terms of my academics, <laughs> average. I literally just got a 60 on my last physics test. <laughs> but even more so, I'm not an expert in anything. But that doesn't matter. Because in my free time, I like to make inventions and I like to do research that has the possibility of making the world a better place. And in the past two years, I've been able to experience something truly insane. I want you all to imagine, right, walking into a room where literally the passion and the excitement fill the air like syrup. Where you're walking and you're seeing a room just like this, but filled with kids that are literally geniuses and that are experts in their individual fields of study and research. And that was the International Science and Engineering Fair. And amidst all of that, I was there. But with a different project, in a different field, with no expertise whatsoever, but I was there. And what that should show me, and what that should show you guys, is that you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be an expert in any field whatsoever to make a difference in this world. In fact, two years ago, I had this mentor teacher, friend. His name was Dr. Olis. And while Dr. Olis was teaching me, he developed liver cancer. And as I was trying to find ways to address this diagnostic process, to improve it, I would present my ideas that I had to Dr. Olis. And as I would talk to him, despite not having any knowledge about chemistry or the human body, or really anything related to the topic, Dr. Olis would encourage me, and he would tell me to do it, and he would give me the advice, despite not having like, any knowledge about it, and unlike any human being, unlike any normal human being, he didn't discourage me. And unfortunately, during this development process, Dr. Olis passed away. But what he left with me was this undeniable sensation of the importance 
of belief in oneself and mentorship. So I know that not all of us are going to have that Dr. Olis with you, to believe in you, to encourage you. But what I do know is knowing that you don't have to be a genius, knowing that you don't have to be an expert, knowing that you don't have to be anything other than yourself to solve the world's biggest problems, knowing that should give you no excuse to not go out there and make the world a better place. But how? How do you come up with these great ideas? How do you do this? How do you come up with these great ideas that you're talking about? And the truth is, it's all about persistence and perseverance. Because just as the age-old quote goes, if I had six hours to cut down a tree, I would spend the first four sharpening my ax. And what that should demonstrate is the importance of that idea by laying the foundation for any major change you're going to make in the world. And what that should show you is the importance of that idea. And I remember just earlier this year developing this idea to create this tablet that could help visually impaired individuals. But what happened to that was after telling all my friends and family about how incredibly great this idea was going to be, everything fell apart. And yeah, that had a men negative mental impact on me. But what was even more important was that I didn't stop there, that I stepped back up, and I continued working, and I kept continued developing, and eventually I created this idea to address seawall issues and something completely different in a drastically different field. And what that should show you guys is that you should never stop when you get a bad, bad idea. That out of many, 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 many bad ideas, you might get one good one. And that's so significant for creating new ideas and inventions to help the world. But the second idea that I want to present to you guys is this idea of constantly thinking about the problems you're trying to solve in the back of your mind. Because what I've noticed is that whenever you're trying to solve these problems and you're thinking about it in the back of your mind, the inspiration will eventually come. I remember earlier this year when I was watching the news and I was doing research about water crises all around the world and becoming extremely worried about these problems, what I saw was that I needed to do something to help this problem. And as I was researching and developing and thinking and thinking and thinking, one day when I was literally just walking outside, I looked at a leaf and I thought to myself, man, what if we could distill water from penicillin and perforium to help to alleviate the water crisis in Uganda? <laughs> no. It wasn't anything like that, but I did get that spark, that hint of an idea that allowed me to formulate this bigger idea and develop a sustainable way to efficiently extract water from plant matter. And that was huge because, yeah, anyone can look at a leaf. Anyone. <laughs> but if I wasn't thinking about that problem in the back of my head, I never would have solved that issue. Right? And so I want you all to remember that to solve these big problems, you're going to need to never stop thinking about these problems, to never give up when you get bad ideas, and to never settle for anything less than you know you can achieve. But once you have this great idea, what do you actually have to do to create an impact in this world? And to make any major change in this world, you have to have two things. You have to have this willingness to make a radical change to a situation, but also paired with a willingness to change yourself. Because so many people have ideas, they have visions, they have plans for the world, but they fall short because they have this fear that they can't solve this problem. They have this disbelief that they can create this radical change in the world. And that's what's holding us back from making the world a better place. Because I remember literally just earlier this year when I was presenting that project that I just explained with the water crises all around the world, at every level of science fair, these judges would criticize me. And they would put down my research. 
they would say, man, you're trying to solve a problem that's, that's too big, that's too complex, that's too rooted in the situations of our world. You'll never be able to solve that problem. You'll never be able to truly understand it. And if anything, that should show you that how little people truly believe in the capability to make radical change in this world. And not only that, but once you have that, you should understand that it's even more important to believe in yourself because that belief is what carried me through. But that belief in oneself has to be paired with a willingness to make that radical change to yourself. Because earlier this year, not with science for this time, but with this organization called FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America, I experienced something truly amazing. I became district president earlier this year, and from a lot of encouragement from my friends, my family, I decided I would run for the office of state president. And literally two weeks, two weeks before the elections, I started realizing some things that I would need to make a campaign team and I would need to give a speech in front of like 5,000 people and that's when the stress levels started rising. <laughs> that's when the stress levels started rising, two weeks before. And that's when I realized that I would need to make myself a better version of me. I would need to make myself that more dedicated member of FBLA that the members would want me to be. And I would need to become a better public speaker. And yeah, I did end up winning that election, but only by making myself a better version of me. And through that process, I was able to change the characteristics of me that were holding me back for, from accomplishing my goals. And so the moral of the story is that there are so many problems out there that need to be solved. And we can't just have a handful of people working to solve these problems when every single one of you has the capability to do so. So now that you all know why you need to solve the problems, you know how you will solve these problems, and you know what you need to change in the world to implement them, stop being held back by your fear. Stop being held back by that disbelief that you can actually create change in the world. Stop being held back. Because there are seven and a half billion people in this world. Just imagine if all of them put their minds to solving the world's biggest problems. Just imagine. Thank you all very much, and have a wonderful night.